Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, yeah. So today I want to talk about this algorithm. I think this one is like interesting one that uh, basically use uh, some use the randomized uh, power, and uh, I think the setting is very interesting. So I would like to share with you guys, and hope you guys subscribe. And uh, the there's an error analysis that I think is also interesting. So I sometimes I just I just search online and see something interesting. And this one I think is very interesting. Okay, so the problem is the following, right? So the let's say uh given A and B and the C are both uh, n by n matrices. Okay, so let's say the let's say the coefficient is the integer, okay. And the uh, and the, your question is that uh, so uh, so the question is that the check C is equals to A times B. Okay. So somebody give you any like three n by n matrices A B C and you are asking where C is equals to A equals to A times B. Okay. So the naive way, right? So the the this is the interesting part, right? So the naive way to to do this, right? So the naive way to do right is to uh is to like uh, do the multiplication, right? So just uh, compute A and B, then check uh, whether C equals to uh, A, A and B. Okay, and uh, this will require that uh, a fast matrix multiplication, right? So maybe it takes N to a two, three, something. Okay. Uh, to find, uh, to check, okay. But there is a probability uh, method that if you require probability, if you re, re, uh, you you can use a randomized algorithm, then the one can only the one can use only uh Owen square to check. Okay, so basically the the precise statement is that uh, uh you can just check you can just use O K N square uh to check whether C equals A B and uh with probability. So uh, your fail failure probability is just well. Uh, your failure probability will less or equal to one divided by two to the k. So basically, if you increase your k, then your failure probability will be one divided by will be uh, exponential smaller. Okay. And uh, the the so the the idea is very very simple. The idea is that okay. So this idea is very simple. So in order to do this, right, you just you just. Uh, you just define a p right to be a vector, let's say a b, and then with vector r minus c r, right? And uh, so you can do this, and you are not computing a b, right? You you not you just write write this, and uh, you generate you generate r to be the zero one vector, r to be the zero one vector, let's say n by n, let's say n uh column vector with n n. Zero or one, so R is rendered. So you R is rendered. So for uh, for example, R may look like uh, maybe zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero. This. Okay, then the total has uh, a. Okay, so all you need to do is just compute B. Uh, sorry, compute P. Okay, so notice that this is just the vector multiplication, right? So we only require O and square, and uh, so if uh, obviously right, if A B is equal to C. Then P must be zero. Okay, and uh, if A B do not the same as C, then you have the high probability that P is non-zero. Okay, so what this means is that uh, if the A B not does not the same as C, then uh, then if A B do not the same as C, the probability of P is zero is less or equal to half. Okay. So uh, once you can prove this, then you can just uh, keep uh, amplify this error bound. Uh, amplify this error, just do multiplicate, uh, do more time, uh, do more time on, uh, just run this algorithm for many times, right? And then you will, uh, with high probability that you can find that uh, uh, C is not the same as AB if they are different. Okay, so the only uh, I think this uh, up to this one is trivial, right? Because if a b equals to c, then obviously that uh, p must be zero. So that's let me just prove the rest. Okay, so the idea is that let's say write d equals to a b minus c, and the things uh, suppose there are non uh these are non-zero, right? So that means that there's an i and j, 
such that uh, D I D I J is a D I J is not zero. Okay, so uh, D is just D. Uh, the component of D is called a small D I J. Okay, so let's using cap small D I J. Okay. Okay, so now our P I will be what? Our P I will be summation of D I K R K. Right. So this is a vector. K from one to n. And then let's say so I can write D I J R J plus Y. So Y is the rest. Okay, so I pick out the one term and the rest I call it Y. Okay, so I want to ask what is the probability that the P I equals to zero. Okay. Because if PI is non-zero, then I, I I got it, right? So PI equals zero can be uh can be separated as uh uh, whether uh, y is zero or not, right? So I can write pi equals zero, conditionally on y equals zero times probability of y zero plus p probability of p i is zero, y is down zero, and the probability of y is down zero. Okay, so now uh, let's check. So, so for the first one, okay, so first one. Why is the probability of pi zero and the y zero? Uh, so if y zero and the pi zero, that means that since the ij is different, uh, non zero, right? So rj must be zero. Right, but the probability that you choose rj is zero is a half, right? It's basically half. Okay, and uh, what's the probability of pi is zero, but the y is non zero? Okay. And in this case, that uh, if pi is zero, right, and the y is non-zero, then the only case is that it's weird that the only case is that this dij must be negative y, okay? Okay, so this is basically, but I mean, rj can only be like plus or minus one, right? So rj must be one. And also uh, dij must be less or equal to neg, must be equal to neg, uh, uh, must be equal to negative y. So you have two conditions, right? One is Rj must be one. If Rj is zero, then then this cannot happen. So Rj must be one, and the Dij equals to negative y. So this guy is still less than half, right? Because this guy less than the probability of Rj equals to one. Okay. So combine these two, you have this and this, right? So you can prove that probability of Pi zero is less or equal to half of plus probability of y zero plus half of one minus probability of y zero. Because probability either is zero or non-zero. So this guy is less or equal to half. Okay. And the probability of p is zero is basically less or equal to right less or equal to probability of p p i is zero, right? Because the uh, probability probability of p is zero means that all the uh, i from one to n must be zero. But now we I already proved that the first part the single term is less than half, right? So it is half. Okay, so that means that if p is now if there is a dij which is now zero, then we'll we'll get the probability of p is equal to zero is less than equal to half. Okay, so this proof this algorithm can be the error can be uh, keep uh, amplified. Okay, so this is very interesting. So let me say that if you have randomness, then you can do very uh, very interesting case. Okay, see you guys uh, next videos.